However, much for Bristol Romano told us yesterday that United are not going to go in for any signing, not until Aaron Rand Bissaka leaves. That's when they'll really find a way of bringing in a new signing. But we've gotten a story from a third tier journalist that United are expiring a cut price transfer of Yuri Tidemans in this January transfer window. Welcome to Rokan, welcome to United Matters channel, and this is the United Matters channel. Rokan David is my name. Smash the like button, comment, and share. And if you're totally watching us for the very first time, lower right bottom corner, that's the place to be. And smash the black button that has the word subscribe. After smashing it, hit the notification bell that will enable you get notified every time I upload a video onto this channel. Now, Today is a Monday. Good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're watching us from. It's really nice to be talking to you again because you guys are really my, 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 you are my morning lunch, you are my breakfast, lunch, and supper because it's you I serve. It's you I serve, and I'm happy that you guys are really receiving my, my food very very welcoming <laughs> that's it and it's not always easy to be having people that you go ahead and make happy and really serve on a daily basis and they really appreciate because we are having 10,000 subscribers already plus 200 more we are left with like 80 subscribers to hit 10,300 subscribers that's why i call upon you to subscribe to this channel to see it that these numbers continue growing then we're going to talk about veg host the message he put out on his instagram after his shirt number was revealed remember yesterday his shirt number was revealed and obviously he took part into the first united training session yesterday at carrington and lastly we're going to talk about the takeover of united that has been postponed until april and you know what it means because we are suffering the general transfer window because of the untimely because of the untimely planning of the glazers that really put us into this if at all we were really in the general transfer window i believe would have been into a title race perfectly but because of the squad that we are having and injuries that are accumulating you don't find us into this not so so we start off with a tweet that i brought you yesterday fabricio romano went ahead and we told us that united will not sign more players in january unless aaron one bisaka leaves where they will look to sign a new backup right back that's what he told us but today morning we've gotten a story from a transfer journalist known as sacha tavoyeri telling us that United are exploring a cut price move for UDT demands this month. So, talking UDT demands, you ask yourself the following questions. Does United need UDT demands? Obviously, yes. Does he solve the problems in our midfield? Yes, because he plays in every position of the midfield. He can play as a CDM. He can play in the double pivot. He can play as a central attack midfielder. So, he solves exactly the, mid, the midfield problems of Manchester United. Then, does he fit the philosophy of what Ten Hag wants at Manchester United? Obviously, yes. Is he really up to that level of quality and having that level to commit himself for United? The answer is yes. Has United ever looked at him under the Eric Ten Hag era? Yes, before we went in for Rabio. Rumors were outside that United is really trying to monitor the situation with the demands at Tottenham Hotspur sorry at leicester city to see that they can really buy him so there has been interest in the previous summer and if at all united can really do this then it will be something great and to me however much united saying they don't have money to do deals but what they did in the summer surprised me you get we were told they never had money but after losing to brighton and brentford United went and paid £70 million for Casemiro and paid £85 million for Anthony. So, in just a week's time, they spent close to £160 million. That is United for you. So, I'm here asking myself, what really changed? What really happened? What really happened? Did the miracle happen? Because to me, I look at that as a miracle because no one saw United pull out such a move. That's it. No one... So United pull out such a move. So Unity Demands is left with just now five months on his contract. By the 30th of June, he's going to be a free agent. He has gone ahead to be adamant on his situation at Leicester City. He doesn't want to renew his contract with Leicester City and he wants to go out. Arsenal have been the suitors of this player for a very, very long time. It has been two summers. Arsenal chasing for him. They chased for him in the summer of 2021. Leicester was calling for £65 million. 
Arsenal was willing to offer only 45. Then Arsenal backed out. In the next summer of 2022, Arsenal went in offering 25 million pounds. Leicester was calling for 35 million pounds because he was left with one year on his contract, meaning that he is left with just five months on his contract. Arsenal may sweep in. Even United are looking to be exploring a cut price more for United teamers. And obviously, I believe at 10 15 million pounds united can get this player united can get this player and people are asking themselves where are we going to get the money now we have players at united that can be loaned and are being wanted by different teams now if you loan elanga to everton and you get like three million pounds loan fee uh zidane Iqbal to middlesbrough and you get like one million pound loan fee uh for kind of palestry there is a block of loaning him but i believe you can loan him somehow Twanzebe, if at all he be his feet, you can get some three or four million pounds of loan fee. And you can sell Brandon Williams. You can sell Brandon Williams or loan him. I believe if at all you can loan out close to five players from the current squad of Manchester United, we can get ourselves money that can get Tillemans in. Because you pay 10 million pounds up front, then some two, three million pounds of add-ons. Not so, according to me. So I believe there are avenues of United raising money and getting in players. And if at all they don't get in Tidiman, it looks like United are in need of another player, maybe in the midfield, because Donny van Beek got injured and Ten Hag is really having limited options in the central attack midfield area. He prefers to play Ericsson in a double pivot with Casemiro, not as a central attacking midfielder in the game of football. So as things stand, it looks like United are exploring a deal of Yuri Tidemans, and I believe it's possible for them to go ahead and do it because 15 million pounds is less money as far as getting Tidemans is concerned. And we are getting him on the permanent. I'll understand some questions will be coming in from you, the viewers of United Matters channel, that if United couldn't pay that amount of money that was called for by a team known as Atletico Madrid, 9 million pounds for a loan fee of a player known as Yao Felix, and they opted for Veghos, will they pay this amount of money for Unity Tillemans? I say yes, they can. Do you know why? This is going to be a permanent fee. But to pay a loan of 9, 10 million pounds per player that is going to be here for six months, it does not make business sense according to me. And this is where I go ahead and really hail the people at the board because if you get in Veghos and we get in Tillemans, in that amount of money we would have paid for a deal of Tillemans, then it would have worked out like a charm. That's it. So let's wait and see how this is going to unfold at Manchester United. But I believe we might push out for something. Even if it's not a permanent deal of Yuri Tidemans, I believe there are very many, there are very many transfers. There are very many players that are viable on loan. And it's just a wash situation. That's it. So I believe we can get in a midfielder on loan and we can really get him back later or really sign him on a permanent deal depending on the situations. We would have agreed a deal with that team that is willing to take on a player from Manchester United. Now, Veghorst took part into the first training session of Manchester United and let me show you how he really appeared. That is how he really put it on his Instagram and said, off we go. He took part in his first training session at Carrington and remember, Every player that never took part into the game of Manchester City at Old Trafford trained yesterday. The likes of Pelestri, um, Linderov, even Harry Maguire, Lisandro Martinez, those that came on through in the last minutes, the Alejandro Ganachos, they trained at Old Trafford yesterday. And today, the entire team is going to train as we prepare for the game of Crystal Palace. So that is Veghorst, and that's how he trained with Manchester United yesterday. So yesterday, his shirt number was revealed by the website of Manchester United. And guess what? He was given shirt number 27, formerly being donned by Alex Telles, meaning that maybe this is a confirmation that Alex Telles is not going to return to Manchester United. They are going to sell him in the summer. And obviously, he has no position to play in that United side because they are, there is Malaysia and Luxor, of which they've gone ahead to perform very, very well. Now, after being unveiled and given a shirt number 27, he took it to his Instagram and said, can't wait to get started in the theater of dreams i'll give my all for this incredible club let's go reds that is what veg hospital went ahead to say and i like his his anxiety to come at the club like manchester united you know chance 
is really the leader of every success in life. However much you are prepared and you are hardworking, luck really leads the way. So, see the luck. This position was supposed to be for Cody Gapko. <laughs> That's it. In the summer, Cody Gapko was supposed to be signed by Manchester United. But from nowhere, United spends like 20 million pounds more on Casemiro, 35 million pounds more on a player known as Anthony. Meaning that if at all you had not spent that extra 50 million pounds on two players, 30 million pounds would have been available to sign Cody Gapko from PSV. That never happens. Now, in the January transfer window, United goes in for a player known as Cody Gapko again. Ten Hag says, I want the player, get me that player. And what happens? United happens to be in a situation of bankruptcy, not having money to execute the deal to get 37 million pounds out of their pockets to pay for Cody Gapko. Guess who comes in? It's Wout Weghorst. He comes in to play for Manchester United. And that is luck. But he had to really showcase that masterclass in the game of Argentina when he scored a brace of the World Cup to really put himself back in the spotlight such that such, such opportunities reorganize him. So those two goals he scored in the World Cup made Eric Ten Hag remember about him and said, oh, there is Veghorst. I've been scouting him for the last 14 years because Ten Hag confirmed to us yesterday that he has been scouting Veghorst for the last 14 years since he was 16. So that confirms to us how luck really went into play for this man to come at Manchester United. But he used that luck and obviously scored two goals against Argentina and put himself into the shop window of the January transfer window. As things stand, Veghorst is expected to start by the way the game of Crystal Palace because looks like Martial is injured and is not going to take part in trading today and it's rumored that he might not we might not see him play in the game of Crystal Palace and the game of Arsenal so that means Vegas has put himself into a chance to start and that's why he's training hard and I believe he's going to go ahead and really do the needful for the club of Manchester United obviously giving us the best that we deserve and at least I know he's going to perform very well I think he's going to hit the ground running because he has found a team not in a struggling manner. Our team is not struggling. He, it's not struggling at all. And when you're going to go away at Crystal Palace, you need a bully like this guy. You need a bully like this guy because Crystal Palace is a team that fronts physicality ahead of playing the game of football. So it's really not going to be an easy game. But with Veghorst in there for you, the job might be made easy by him. So that's what he has for us. And obviously, another hit is all about Casemiro. If at all, he gets a yellow card in the game of Crystal Palace. He's not going to play into the game of Arsenal. So those are two worries. We're not having Anton Martial. Let's wait and see what Ten Hag tells us about, tells about, tells, tells us about Martial on Tuesday. Then Casemiro, if he gets a yellow card in the game of Crystal Palace on Wednesday, he's not going to play against Arsenal. Now, if at all you are told, do you rather play Casemiro in the game of Crystal Palace or... You play him in the game of Arsenal. I say, as Rokan David, why do you cross a bridge before you reach it? Let's play Casemiro in the game of Crystal Palace. After playing him, if at all he gets a yellow card, then we'll improvise on what we are going to go ahead and do on the game of Arsenal. Scott McTominay can come in through, play with Freddie or Ericsson to see to it that United really gets the best that they deserve. And I don't fancy benching Casemiro. And I know Ten Hag, Ten Hag won't do that. Ten Hag will put in Casemiro. If at all he gets a yellow card, obviously, he misses out. Because even Arsenal yesterday was in the same situation with playing Spurs. Saliba, one of the most reliable central defenders of Arsenal, was on four yellow cards. He gets a yellow card yesterday. He misses out onto the game of Spurs. So, game of Manchester United. Bukayo Saka, on four yellow cards. He gets a yellow card yesterday. He misses out. But, lucky enough, none of them got a yellow card and that might play as a luck to the side of Arsenal because for us Casemiro if at all he gets one he's going to be out and uh, going at Arsenal without Casemiro it will be really bad because they are going to be home and um, they might really create a lot of trouble to the team of Manchester United especially in the midfield because Thomas Partey has been really a revelation and he is much that has really out outperformed him in the Premier League right now is Casemiro you expect 
if you have Casemiro that's in 21st midfield to be a better strong side for United. Now, let's leave at that. That is the Anton Martial and Casemiro worry ahead of the Arsenal game. But let's do this last story and we recall it a day. So there is a journalist that I've been following for a very long time. He's known as Peter O'Rourke. He has told us that United aims to complete a takeover deal within the first quarter or by the end of April. United are expected to inform interest parties in the coming days that formal bids will be taken next month for total buyouts as well as minority stakes. So, my worry comes in when I hear at the end of April. End of April is far. End of April is far. If at all it's March, and at the beginning of April, we know that we are having new owners, that's okay, because there, the new owners will come in through, talk to Eric Ten Hag, because Ten Hag already has his list of players he wants, and then do the scouting for the club and decide on who we are going to bring. That's it. But if at all you say end of April, that means the takeover is going to be done, complete, is going to be completed in May. You get May, that brings us to the end of the season, and we might find ourselves in the situation of Chelsea. They were in last summer. Tony Boyle comes in through late, and obviously they never prepared themselves early enough to scout players who are really going to come in and really do the needful. And when you put in account of United being one of the teams that really takes long to negotiate deals, you really worry about this team. You really worry about this team. That's it. You worry 100% about this team because you wouldn't like a team like Manchester United to see its takeover completed or accomplished in the end, at the end of May and then June as we go into the transfer window things won't be unfolding up very well so I believe we should see this done because I've, I've been told bids are going to be expected in the mid of of February for the takeover of the club so let's wait and see how things are really going to happen I thought that I should conclude this and throw in to you because most of you like B. Seguera have been asking me about the takeover but this is the latest news about the takeover of Manchester United that March and April that's when the takeover is expected to be accomplished so guys what are your thoughts about United accomplishing sorry about United exploring a cut price transfer for your utilities then Tell me what you think about Vegos. Do you think he's really going to go ahead and do the in full? Martial and Casemiro worries that I've talked about. What are your thoughts about it? And lastly, the takeover of Manchester United that might see itself prolonged until the end of April. Do you really fancy that? All not. Rock and David remains my name. United Matters Channel is the YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching it through. First video of the day. More is yet to come. News is coming in slowly, but I know as it's a Monday. In the next one or two or three hours, we are going to be having news that is really confirmed coming in from the United correspondents that really do this news, especially addressing this deal of Yuri Tillemans to Manchester United. May the Almighty Lord brighten your day and help you prosper in every aspect of life. I sign out for now. See you later. I remain Rock and David. I'm out.